All right, I want to make a real quick video on this because it's kind of cool. Uh, when I was coming back from WWDC, the guy across the aisle from me in the flight, he had Cyberpunk running on a MacBook. And at first I was like, eh, whatever, Cyberpunk on a MacBook. We've seen that before. But then a little while later, I was like, wait a minute. How is he doing this? There's no Wi-Fi here. It's not a stream. He's not using GeForce Now. He's not using some kind of Steam streaming. Like, wh how is he doing this? So I started to creep. I was like, what's he doing? And then I also noticed at the top right of his screen, there was some kind of performance monitoring going on. I was like, I've never seen that before. So I just straight up asked him at the end of the flight. I'm like, explain, how did, how did you do that? So it turns out at WWDC, Apple launched this tool called the Game Porting Toolkit. And the purpose of this tool was originally to allow developers to take their pre-existing like DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 games and just run it through a translation layer so that you could play it on Mac OS. And this really brute force kind of rough manner just for developers to kind of get a gauge of how much effort they need to put into their workflow to be able to actually do a proper port. But one of the side benefits is that it's a very crude way of just running Windows games, DirectX 11, DirectX 12 games, on macOS, particularly of note DirectX 12 games, because prior to this tool, there was no real way to run DX12 games on macOS, Apple Silicon macOS. So here's a chart of some games I tested out. And at first I was testing on a 14 inch MacBook Pro running the M2 Max, but I was also able to get some data on M1 products as well. So some games ready run really well, other games less so, but it was really interesting to me that we can even get stuff like Diablo 4 and Cyberpunk running with almost no effort. It's just a few downloads and terminal commands and you should be up and running. And I'll drop a link in the description so you can kind of follow along with some guides. Uh, but the thing to note here is that all of the data you're seeing is not actually representative of what these systems are capable of. What you're seeing here are the numbers that you get when you brute force a DX12 game through the translation layer to metal. Like you're just gonna eat shit on performance. You have a ton of overhead, you have the API that's eating it up, you have like the Rosetta 2 translation, plus the game itself is not optimized. It's not elegant at all, but it works. Now, in one of the developer sessions, they showed how there was a game that had some issues on a particular scene. It was getting 30 frames per second or so instead of the 50 or 60 it should have been getting. So they tweaked it, they figured out what was wrong with it, and they were able to get this game running natively at the full 60 frames per second. So again, all of this data is super raw and really just for interest's sake. But I am surprised at how well some of these games are able to run on just like a fanless M1 MacBook Air. Uh, okay, so yeah, if you're interested in trying this out for yourself, if you're like really thirsty for Diablo 4 on a Mac, you can give it a shot. But I have to say, this toolkit and what they showed at WWDC was one of the biggest pushes I've seen from Apple to really bring resources and just tools for AAA developers to bring their games onto Mac OS, which is a win for everybody, really. Okay, that's it. 